Catechism on Modernism Preamble of the Encyclical on the Gravity of the Errors of the Modernists Question What is one of the primary duties appointed by Christ to the Sovereign Pontiff? A. His Holiness the Pope replies, one of the primary obligations assigned by Christ to the office, divinely committed to us of feeding the Lord's flock, is that of guarding with the greatest vigilance the deposit of the faith delivered to the saints, rejecting the profane novelties of words and the gainsaying of knowledge falsely so called. Question. Has such vigilance been necessary in every age? A. There has never been a time when this watch fullness of the supremo pastor was not necessary to the Catholic body, for, owing to the efforts of the enemy of the human race, there has never been lacking men, speaking perverse things, vain talkers and seducers, f erring and driving into error. J. Question. Are these men, erring and driving into error, more numerous in our day, and what object have they in view? A. It must be confessed that these latter days have witnessed a notable increase in the number of the Acts 20, 30, F Titus I, 10, backslash 2 Tim, 3, 13, enemies of the cross of Christ, who, by arts entirely new and full of deceit, are striving to destroy the vital energy of the church, and, as far as in them lies, utterly to subvert the very kingdom of Christ. Question. Why may not the sovereign pontiff remain silent? A. We may no longer keep silence, lest we should seem to fail in our most sacred duty, and lest the kindness that, in the hope of wiser counsels, we have hitherto shown them, should be set down to lack of diligence in the discharge of our office. Question. Where in these days are the partisans of error? Are they open enemies? A. That we should act without delay in this matter, continues the Holy Father, is made impera. Tithe, especially by the fact that the partisans of error are to be sought, not only among the Church's open enemies, but, what is most to be dreaded and deplored, in her very bosom, and are the more mischievous the lest they keep in the open. Question. Holy Father, are these secret enemies, who ring your paternal heart, to be found among Catholics, and are there even priests among them? A. Yes. We allude to many who belong to the Catholic laity, and, what is much more sad, to the ranks of the priesthood itself, who, animated by a full seal for the Church, lacking the solid safeguards of Philo, Sophie and theology, nay, more, thoroughly imbued, with the poisonous doctrines taught by the enemies of the French, mistranslating rather felicitously, has artisans. D. Ero. J. F. The Church, and lost to all sense of modesty, put themselves forward as reformers of the Church. Question. Do these Catholic laymen and these priests, who pose as reformers of the Church, dare to attack the work, and even the person of Jesus Christ? A. Forming boldly into line of attack, they assail all that is most sacred in the work of Christ, not sparing even the person of the Divine Redeemer, whom, with sacrilegious audacity, they degrade to the condition of a simple and ordinary man question. But will these men be astonished at being accounted by your holiness as enemies of Holy Church? A. Although they express their astonishment that we should number them amongst the enemies of the Church, no one will be reasonably surprised that we should do so, if, leaving out of account the internal disposition of the soul, of which God alone is the judge, he considers their tenets, their manner of speech, and their action. Nor, indeed, would he bow wrong in regarding them as the most pernicious of all the adversaries of the Church. Question. Why do you say they are the worst enemies of the Church? A. As we have said, they put into operation their 
designs for her undoing, not from without but from within. Hence, the danger is present almost in the very veins and heart of the church, whose injury is the more certain from the very fact that there no ledge of her is more intimate. Question. For what other reason are they the worst enemies of the church? A. Moreover, they lay the axe not to the branches and shoots, but to the very root, that is, to the faith and its deepest fibers. Question. Are they satisfied with cutting at the root of immortal life? A. Once having struck at this root of immortality, they proceed to diffuse poison through the whole tree, so that there is no part of Catholic truth which they leave untouched, none that they do not strive to corrupt. Question. By what means do they pursue their purpose? I've had tactics do they adopt? A. None is more skillful, none more astute than they, in the employment of a thousand noxious devices. For they play the double part of rationalist and Catholic. 